Mystery Science Theater 3000 is one of my very favorite shows ever, and the new season of Mystery Science Theater, the most recent one that was produced and released originally last year, is now streaming on demand, free to watch with ads on Pluto TV. And I should point out right up front here, this is not sponsored content. Nobody from Pluto TV paid me to say this. It just so happens that I heard about it uh, last week, and I have been spending my spare time, as I've had it since then, trying to catch up on the most recent season of MST3K, which I did not see over the last year or so as they released the new episodes on the new MST3K website, the Gizmoplex, which is where the new episodes have been streaming, and you can either buy like a package to to buy all of the episodes for the season, or you can buy and piecemeal one episode at a time. I just chose not to do that. But since they've been streaming for free with ads on Pluto, I've been watching them. I, I think they made 13 or 14 episodes this most recent season. I've had a chance to watch about four or five of them, maybe six of them. Um, so I haven't seen the whole season yet, but what I've seen so far has been really good. I've enjoyed it a lot. It's been really funny. I highly recommend it. If you are a fellow Misty and you haven't had a chance to see the most recent season, check it out on Pluto TV if if you have the opportunity. And there's one thing about the new season that I really like, in addition to the fact that the episodes are strong and it's really funny, it puts to the test the most sacred creed of Mystery Science Theater, which is, repeat to yourself, it's just a show. I should really just relax. That line is in every version of the MST3K theme song throughout the many different versions, all the different hosts, all the different networks it's been on over the years. That line is always in the theme song, and it's become kind of the, the creed of the Misty, you know, and, and it's very informative and very educational and very useful especially if you're a fan of stuff like Star Trek and Star Wars and, you know, science fiction superhero stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't become distracted by the minutia, by the technicalities, by stuff that really doesn't matter. Be critical, but be critical about things that matter. Don't be critical about the little technical details or, or things that are just trivialities that, that, you know, if it's done well, if, if the creators are doing their job, shouldn't distract you from the story that's being told and the characters and the really important stuff. So I apply that not just to mystery science theater, but to everything. And I found it very useful in keeping perspective when you're, you're engaging with any kind of art, with any kind of narrative. And mystery science theater in this new season puts that to the test because the format of the show in this season is so different from past seasons of the show that I can very easily see some hardcore mystery science theater fans reacting to it the same way that like hardcore old school Trekkies reacted when the first season of Discovery premiered and they were like, it doesn't look right. You know, this is the mid 23rd century. This is 10 years before Captain Kirk. The ship shouldn't look like that. The uniform shouldn't look like that. Why does it look different? You know? Why do Klingons look like that? The Klingons shouldn't look like that. Like, I could, I can imagine some Misties who have lost perspective reacting similarly to some of the changes that they made to the show in this most recent season of MST3K. And it's almost like, and I don't know this for a fact, I don't know what the intentions were of Joel and the other, the writers and producers who were responsible for the season of the show. I don't know if they were doing this intentionally or if it just worked out this way, but I can believe that some of it was purposeful, that some of it was uh, changing things or introducing innovations to, to the format of the show in ways that they thought might push longtime fans' buttons and might get them to, to you know, get a little grouchy about it. And so that then they could be reminded, ah, oh, just repeat to yourself, it's just a show, I should really just relax. For instance... For the first time in the history of the show, this season of MST3K has not one, not two, but three different hosts all at the same time. There's Jonah, who was introduced as the new host 
uh, when Joel brought the show back a few years ago. They did their their first two seasons of the revival on Netflix, and then for this third season of the revival. Um, they they did it independently and put it up on their Gizmoplex website. But Jonah is back. He was the 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 third host after Joel and Mike, you know, on the classic version of the show. So Jonah's still there. But in addition to Jonah, there's also Emily, who is who was introduced as a new host this year. Emily hosts uh, episodes that take place not on the satellite of love, but on the simulator of love, which is a setting that is exactly like the satellite of love only it is uh it it is located on the ground and it allows king of forester played by felicia day and uh, her her henchman max played by pat Oswalt. they are the mad scientists of this era of of the show it allows king to produce more content and have two hosts working at the same time, which will make the show more profitable and will and will drive social media engagement. Because one of the things they they also do with this version of the show is Kinga is making it uh, explicitly a for profit enterprise for her. Like she is doing things in the show specifically designed within the fiction of the show to make it more profitable. Because that's what she's all about. Um, so two hosts, one in the satellite, one in the simulator. And there's also a third host because for two episodes, actually for three episodes, because there's one episode, there's the last episode that I haven't watched all the way through yet, where all three of the hosts riff together. But uh, Joel comes back, right? So there are three Satellite of Love hosts riffing simultaneously or, you know, riffing at roughly the same time. They they each, they do one episode at a time for the most part, but, you know, they're all participating in the experiment, let's just say, uh, at the same time. So, and also the satellite of love that Jonah has and the simulator of love that Emily is in, they each have their own Crow and their own Tom Servo. So, Crow and Tom Servo are no longer unique. There's a crow for for Jonah, and there's a crow for Emily. There's a Tom Servo for Jonah, there's a Tom Servo for Emily. And when Joel comes in to riff, he borrows Emily's bots. So Joel riffs with Emily's version of crow and Servo. Um, Which, you know, if you're like an old school fan of MST3K, the, they are whatever, whatever you think about the bots, they are definitely not the original Crow and Servo. You, it was sort of assumed that when the show restarted and Jonah was the host, that the Crow and Servo that were riffing with Jonah were supposed to be the original Crow and Servo. They were the same two robots that riffed with, with Joel in the original show and, and Mike when he took over from Joel. It was supposed to be the, you know, they had different voices, right? And the puppets were a little, a little bit different, but it was supposed to be, you know, Crow and Servo from the original show. And now Emily has a completely different Crow and Servo, and the completely different new Crow and Servo are the ones that riff with Joel, the original host who came up. So there's all kinds of things that they're doing. And it's almost like every time they introduce a change like that, or every time they tweak it, or every time they do something that in a show with a more conventional fan base... Or, or just was a more conventional show, like would really rile up the nerds. You know what I mean? Like you could almost see them, the creators of the show, Joel and the other producers and writers of the show, you could almost like picture them waiting for a negative reaction in the fan base when when they introduce a change. Like, hey, guess what, everybody? There's not going to be just one host in the satellite this year. There's going to be two. And one of them's going to be a woman. And there's going to be two sets of robots. You know, like they're waiting to see a reaction. Like there's not going to be just one crow and servo. There's going to be two crows and two servos. And Joel's coming back. And Joel's going to riff with Emily's bots. Anything? No? And I just, I don't know, there's just something about that that I absolutely love. Again, I don't know if that's their intention. I don't know if they were trying to do that or not. I don't know if they were trying, if they're testing the fan base to see how committed they are to just repeat to yourself, it's just to show I should really just relax or not. I don't know if I'm reading too much into it or not, but I find it absolutely delightful because the rule with MST3K for me, and I think for most people who are longtime fans of the show and really get the show, 
The rule of MST3K is what happens in the theater when they're watching the movies and riffing on the movies, that's the show. Everything else that happens is just dressing, is, is, is just extra stuff to justify, to explain to us, okay, why are these guys in the theater with these robots watching these bad movies? If the movies are so bad, why are they watching them? Like, what's the justification for it? The justification is that the guy or the girl, in the case of Emily, is a is part of an experiment, is an unwilling test subject, and they have the robots with them to help them keep their sanity as they make fun of the movies and they're forced to watch these bad movies. Like, that's... It's the conceit of the show, you know? And yeah, sure, the host segments are are, are funny. Like, the, when they come out of the theater and they do their little bits to the camera and the satellite, like, those are great, and I wouldn't want to get rid of those at all. But those are just there to create the environment in which the riffing in the theater, when they're watching the movie, takes place. That's the heart of the show. That's the whole point. And as long as that is funny... And it is, for the most part, in the in the new episodes. Like, the riffing is not uh, lacking at all that I can tell. As long as that works and as long as that's funny, the show works and the show is funny. And everything else is just bonus material. It's just window dressing, you know? It's just support for the riffing in the theater. And this new season really shows that. It really shows that. And I love... That, again, if I'm right, and if I'm not reading too much into it, which I very well may be, it puts that credo of repeat to yourself, it's just a show, I should really just relax, to the ultimate test for fans of this show in particular. And I love it. I am very pleased with the new season. I'm very pleased with uh, how funny it is and how creative it is and how it still feels like there's a lot of life left in this premise and in this franchise and in this show. One of my very, very favorite shows ever. It's been wonderful to, to watch it for so long, to see it go away and come back, to see it get canceled and then get revived multiple times now, to see new creative people come in behind the scenes and make it work, to see new people come in in front of the camera, new uh, hosts, new puppeteers and new voices for the bots. And... To see them find their own ways and, and create their own takes and their own personalities with these characters, but still maintain the essence. Like, Crow is a little different depending on who's doing his voice and who's working the puppet, but he's always essentially Crow somehow, you know? Servo is a little different depending on who's doing his voice and who's working the puppet, but he's always essentially Servo somehow. They manage to to hold on to an essence of the character. And it's fascinating and wonderful. And every host is different. Jonah is great in his own way. Emily is great in her own way. She really uh, has has held her own in her episodes. And Joel coming back and doing new episodes and being a little different than he was, you know, 30 years ago, of course, but, but also being the same, still being Joel. It's just, it's been wonderful. To still have this show, to have this show in a newer, more evolved version than it was, you know, watching these new episodes is not the same as watching episodes from 1990 and 1991 and 1992, but that's okay. It's been wonderful to see the show grow and evolve and change and still retain the soul of what made it such a great show and what made it and continues to make it such a funny show. So yeah, new season of MST3K, Pluto TV, if you're interested. Uh, check it out. I have really enjoyed it so far. And if you are troubled by the multiple hosts or the multiple versions of the robots being active simultaneously or any of the other changes that they've made, just repeat to yourself, it's just a show. I should really just relax. And hopefully laugh, because most importantly of all, it's really funny. So there you go. Bye.